Um, so, yeah, as Donald said, I'm from Kadima, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, a project we've been working on as part of another uh, European project, um, Energy Services Initiative 2020. It's an EPC project for three leisure centres in Dublin, and it's the first EPC project uh, for the public sector in, in Dublin anyway, and I think possibly one of the first <coughs> to go through the full procurement procedure in, um, in Ireland, in the public sector. <coughs> so first to say a little bit about Kadima. We were founded in 1997 under the initiative of Dublin City Council with support from the European Commission. And we work with Dublin as four local authorities um, and we help them uh, on energy advice um, um, energy improvements, uh, the efficiency and carbon reductions, etc. And we offer um, services in the areas of energy awareness, policy and planning, energy and buildings, funding and project management. And over the years we've been quite heavily involved, oh there we go, um, we've been quite heavily involved in European projects, um, we had last year, we had seven on the go, but at the moment we're down to just uh, about two. Uh, Build Smart, which focuses on energy, um, low energy buildings, an FP7 project, and um, this European Services Initiative 2020, which is a project also focused on EPC, and there's a few partners here as well from both projects, and a new project guarantee, which will also focus on EPC. Um, the Energy Services 2020 has just a quick word about it. It's um, got partners from, nine partners from across Europe, and we're going to deliver, I think, 26 EPCs um, as part of this project across Europe, at least one in every country. Some countries have four or five. It was kind of split into senior partners, senior, par senior countries, and, and junior ones. Um, and just in terms of information, there's a very good best practice database on the website which gives very good examples of the various types of EPC around Europe and they're the kind of various mixes you can get. There's a lot of pools of smaller buildings in there and bill of size and it's quite a good tool for stretching. So that's hopefully something that will continue to grow um, over the next couple of years. And all that information is there on the EASY website. Yes. In EPC Plus, okay, my name is Margarita Puente of SCAN and I'm, I'm one of the partners of EPC Plus and also in Transparency. Okay, yes. It's the same project. We, in, the, in your previous slides, yep. I, I am very happy because I saw one of the pilot projects of Transparency called Esther. Okay. So although we, are not, we were not a partner of this project, we. Yes, I about Yes. No, I, I would like to say that um, in the EPC Plus website there is a link to this also to this project. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay. So there's a quite a cozy relationship, I think, between all of them. So uh, why energy performance contracting? And this is a question we kind of first asked when we start, start, set out. And it was very much because we felt we needed to move away from the traditional approach of how we procure our services and actually start getting meaningful, measured, and verified energy savings. And one of the main drivers in the local authority sector, the public sector in Ireland, is this our energy targets up to 2020. And this is a, a chart of Dublin City Council's progress from 2006 up to 2013, and then the targets. This is the baseline energy target up to 2020. So we can see here that they've been doing quite well, doing just enough to achieve their 3% reduction year on year, and that's continuing on quite well. But as we get closer towards the end, it becomes, uh, it's going to become more and more difficult. Just to explain this big shift in the chart here is um, a couple of years back, we had the setting up of this utility called Irish Water which took all of the water services from all the different public bodies and brought it in under one umbrella. So our energy targets had to be, our baseline was adjusted to take account of this. So you can see that they're still just, um, just getting along. But that's, that's one of the main drivers. Um, 
and kind of adding to a point that Reinhard mentioned earlier, this is the top 30 buildings in Dublin City Council. And we can see that we've won, in terms of energy spend, we've won very big, which is the civic offices, has reduced over the last couple of years. But the three buildings that we have chosen for our energy performance contracts are here. And to get a, an energy performance contract that we felt that was going to be actually big enough and attractive enough for the, for the market to get it up around a half million euro spend mark, we pulled the three of them together. But they are top buildings, so it starts to go down a lot after. And once you get down to this kind of area, you're very much into your EPC light or your performance related payment kind of territory, unless we start to bundle them all um, very much together. So the three buildings that we have worked on are um, three leisure centres. This is the first one. It's a Ballymun Leisure Centre. It's in the north of Dublin. It was built in 2005. It's got a floor area of just over 3,200 square metres and an energy spend of just over 230,000 euro. And in terms of measures, we're looking at nothing majorly exciting. CHP system. Um, in this particular building, a full new BMS system. Um, enhanced controls of, of all the mechanical plant, pump and schedules, and um, a full lighting system upgrade. We won't be touching fabric in any of these buildings <coughs> because they're all relatively new. And I think in my limited experience with EPC that fabric and measures and EPC don't really fit together very well. Um, the second is the Fingless Pool, and again, it's built in 2003, floor area of just under 2,000 square meters and a spend of just under 160,000 euro. Very similar measures. The major difference with this facility is that it already has an existing CHP. It has been in there for over 10 years, so that's due a major overhaul. That will be part of the, the, the contract. Um, maybe possibly a heat pump in the main AHU, recommissioned BMS, lighting, um, standard measures. And then the third pool is the smaller of the three, and this is in the city centre of Dublin, and the pool is, is basically in the basement of this building under a, a block of apartments. So it's a bit more confined for space, but we're still hoping to squeeze in um, a CHP. Again, it's a, just over 1,000 square metres and 116,000 um, euro spend. And in terms of measures, we're looking at CHP, BMS, um, lighting systems. Uh, when we look at the three <coughs> pools together, we're looking at a, a spend of just over half a million euro. The investment here is 660,000. It's probably going to be more like 800,000, I'd say but it's still an attractive project. Expected annual savings, just over 200,000. So a three to four year payback. Um, so that's where we started. And then back to the, to the first question, like why, why bother with an EPC? Like this is a fine project, why not go ahead and do it um, the traditional way? I think it's, and if this is something I've been trying to, in all the discussions with the council, that that 200,000 euro is, is just potential. And I very much feel if we take the traditional approach, we will never reach that potential. And if we do, we won't maintain it over years. And we'll never know anyway because we won't measure it. So um, what EPC can really do is to help us fully realize and maintain this potential, to actually keep it there over the eight, six, eight years of a contract. And it will be because that's the, it will be measured and verified and that's the key, um, the key element of the establishing who gets paid and when they get paid. And just back to our energy reduction targets that it, this project would correspond to 2% of the annual 3% reduction target for the city council. So it's, it's, a, it's a decent sized project. So now I just want to talk a little bit about the process. As I mentioned, this was our first EPC. So it has taken us a long time. <laughs> um, I know Paul would be too happy with our procurement uh, speed, but um, this is, you may be familiar with this chart, it's just the various um, processes and steps you go through for developing the EPC, um, right through 
starting with pro project identification over here, right through to procurement phase, and then on to the guaranteed operation. And up on top, we have what we would see as the, the, the customer role. And then underneath here, we have the facilitator role. And in this case, this was Kadima acting with the client or customer, which is Dublin City Council, and then through the process of selecting the ESCO who would manage the installation and, and handle the measures. Um, so we issued our pre-qualification questionnaire for the EPC on the 5th of February 2015. And almost a year later, we went out with our tender document um, on the 11th of February this year. And our submissions, our offers are due back um, in next week. And then we will see um, what has happened. And that, as I said, has taken us quite a long time. But it has been our first, and it's, it's basically, there's been two real strands. I've been working on this for over three years, really. And there's been two issues to deal with. It's generally been the technical, which was relatively straightforward, and then the other side was the people, and just drilling up, getting that momentum going. Let's talk a little bit about the technical. The whole process started with, um, we have SAAI, which is the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland, had this exemplar program. We applied to be part of that because as part of that program, we got um, funded to get technical assessments of the buildings. Um, and we had those carried out. And at the same time, we started collecting our baseline data and establishing a technical file. <coughs> And our baseline data for this was essentially just to, to go to the official uh, metering body. And we got our 15-minute electricity data back as far as 2011. The same for the gas. We had monthly ga gas data back from to 2005 for all the buildings. But in, in addition to this, we installed uh, a metering system um, going up to the cloud, a resource craft system, to gather 15-minute data for both electricity and gas. We very much went a little bit overkill on this because we, we, didn't, we wanted everything. We wanted to have as much as we possibly could. We compiled a technical file, which was provided to all the ESCOs as part, not all the ESCOs, but qualifying ESCOs as part of the competition. And in this, we took the step of actually giving them our three consultant reports that had all of what were our expected savings. We decided to show everything up to say, this is what we're expecting from you. This is what we think is possible. And it was also, because I think the way the process has been set up in Ireland, there's a huge expectation on the ESCOs to go out there and actually, they have to put a lot of work in up front with possibility of, of, of no return. So we wanted to limit that as much as possible as well to actually um, um, give them as much information as good. We had safety file information on the building, which is kind of the handover information from the building contractor to the, to the owner, um, contains all the maintenance schedules and issues like that. We had the BMS data, but it was quite unreliable because that was, as you've seen, there's a big problem with the buildings and why they're not working very well. And when we had very good uh, information on pool usage, opening hours, complaints registers, and then obviously water quality um, um, data and temperatures. So that was the technical side. The people side was essentially where we spent lots of times. And I have to say, it's been meetings, 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 and we're not finished by any way, because one half of the organization has just woken up to the fact that this is all happening and it's real now, so they're still, still explaining it all. And what very much realize is that you really have to sell the concept of EPC, especially in Ireland. I think that's what we have. You're discussing with EPC Plus the getting a kind of a ESCO or a market side ready. There's also our, the, the delivery side. There's also the demand side that we have that is also just emerging as well. And it's selling that concept. And I think having a simple, clear message is what's been so important. And trying to get people to understand that the EPC is about the, the provision of energy savings with a guaranteed outcome. That there's, it can be used as a finance mechanism, it can be used as lots of other things, but at the heart of it, when you get right down to it, it's all about 
the guarantee. It's, it, it's in the name. And when you start to talk to people, you get, it, it gets very confused very quick. Um, We had a first meeting <clears throat> with the Community and Recreations Department in January of 2013. And they contacted me and said, oh, we want to put a CHP in the building. And we had a meeting and uh, I would, we started discussing that was CHP actually the appropriate thing, a measure at all, because there was a, a facilities manager and a an administration staff making a decision that they wanted the CHP because they had one in another building and they liked it. But we made them ask the question, actually, is it appropriate? And then told them about the idea of performance contracting. And they bought into it straight away and they really liked the idea. I think they've since regretted it because it's taken so long, but um, we're getting there now. But this was followed very quickly by a statement of commitment, uh, commitment by senior management. A kind of a, yeah, we like the idea. And we formed a small project team then, which set about <coughs> developing the project, getting all that survey and technical information there, organizing the, the surveys, um, chasing up all the safety files, getting the, the data, and then at the same time, exploring all the finance options that there's a possibility. We've taken the decision to go a kind of a, a shared finance, where the city council are gonna put up a set amount of money and then the ESCO will contribute the rest. Um, all of these things had to be played out and discussed. And we followed that up with a pre presentation to senior management in September of 2014, following which we got permission to advance to the procurement phase. And once we got a commission to the procurement phase, we had to expand our project team to take in procurement, legal, and finance. And that's where the the real education process started when it started to get outside the people who, who initially um, were sold on the idea of EPC. You're starting into a different language, different, different ways of thinking with different challenges. Um, we developed the procurement documents then. So the first one was this pre-qualification questionnaire. So it's a two-stage process. And this pre-qualification questionnaire was, was sent out in February. And this contains basically very general information on, on the project, similar to what I outlined before. Some baseline information, some information about the measures that we think, so that we might, we think a CHP might, might be appropriate. Nothing concrete. But the main part of it then was a questionnaire evaluating the past experience of the ESCOs. And this is my question earlier it came back. If I'm going out as a contract, and I'm nervous about the whole thing, how it's gonna work. And I've got two companies to say they've lots of experience and then a group of people together. It's, you know, how do we make sure that everybody is evaluated equally? And I think that's gonna be a difficulty. Um, so, and then this was shortlisted to a minimum of, of three ESCOs and we're trying to keep it down so that there's, because there's a lot demanded of the ESCOs up front in the way we have it running in Ireland at the moment, um, you need to, they need to know that there's a good chance of success. This was followed by competitive dialogue. Um, and you have this document, which is an invitation to participate in competitive dialogue. But this is one of the key documents for the ESCOs, because this is where this shortlisted ESCOs get provided with the technical file and all the information on the building. And then they're invited to go and visit the buildings. And then at the end of that process, they come back and submit a kind of a draft audit report. And we followed that up with uh, just a round of dialogue interviews where we sat down face to face, we discussed what they said to us, and um, introduced ideas like about funding, um, maintenance, um, what, how was that, how was this going to be dealt with, and um, because we're all kind of learning. So that was a really informative process and it was very valuable. And this was then followed sometime later by the invitation to tender documents. And this was outlining the requirements of, of Dublin City Council, and what I kind of call the boundary conditions, because this is very much where the, the EPC contract completely departs from the traditional contracting approach. The traditional approach, you'd have a specification of works that's sent out there for a contractor that they price on. 
Well, we've set almost our boundary conditions. We've said we want a temperature, whenever we want a humidity, we want a water temperature. We want that existing CHP, one of the boundary conditions that it has to have a major overhaul and some other things. But once you fulfill within those, then, then the ESCO is free to specify any measures um, that they want within those. So it's quite likely that there's one of the leisure centers that we may not get a CHP in at all because there was differing opinions of whether we needed one there. So, but that's what the whole point of the EPC for the, for the council is actually putting that technical risk over to the ESCO and then they guarantee they're the ones who should be making the decisions on what the technical measures are, not the administration staff in a, in a local authority. Um, which is generally the people who end up making those decisions. <clears throat> and then the main evaluation criteria for this invitation to tender, there's a, there's a good few of them, but the main one is based on the, the size of the savings guaranteed offer. It's weighted at around 60%. There's another seven or eight smaller measures, but it, that's, that's in there. So this is what we're gonna get back next week, so we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. Um, the reason, one of the main reasons that there was such a delay, <clears throat> there was kind of some loss of momentum in the very early stages of the project and uh, summer breaks and Christmas breaks, but it was the adapting of the EPC contract. In Ireland, we have a standard EPC contract that was produced and then we had to adapt that for our own spe uh, specific needs and the local authority needs. And this is what took real time is essentially then it, 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 the project became real for the legal and procurement people and that's when they had to, to make decisions. Um, and then it was also the kind of the whole idea of the new payment schedules and mechanisms, just monthly payments and all of this is very new to, um, to, the, to the local authority, the public body. So we're basically at more or less at this stage here now, we're just getting towards our contract closure, um, and hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have um, our measures in and our, on, our, on our project up and running. Um, just by way of kind of the future, we're currently in the initial stages of developing two kind of EPC lighter energy performance related payment contracts, the kind of contracts you'll be talking about here. Um, we're looking at two more projects. I personally think this is going to be a much bigger area for Ireland. It's, it's, it's much bigger, um, much more potential out there. So we're looking, for example, at an LED lighting project with controls in a public building at a value at about 30,000 euro. Um, but we want to get that done with performance guarantees. And then we have a second public building we're looking at, which needs a new boiler, um, new zoning of the heating system, um, controls, a building management system, um, that, that would probably be 100,000 euro plus, but that's, that's our second one. We want to do that in a, in a performance related payment as well. And both of those projects have to be finished by the end of this year. So that's the, the difference there, because it's funding dependent. I have brought along a few brochures I meant to say to you, but um, that we produced just explaining EPC, that um, if anybody wants to look at them, there's part of the, the um, it's a very simple guide. It's the first, first introduction to EPC. Um, we produced as part of the Easy 2020 project. And it just is this, in the middle of it, it has this kind of traditional versus energy performance contracting and, and do's and don'ts. So that's it. Thank you.